Ashley with Amare. Hey, so we're gonna talk about something today. I'm just getting my notes here because I wrote notes and I never write notes for my videos. Um, but I need to talk to you guys about recovery houses. So first of all, let's set the stage. You're going to Miami, you're going to DR, you're going somewhere that is not where you live to go get your surgery done. So you book a recovery house. First of all, we need to set the expectation of why you're booking a recovery house because you want someone to take care of you after surgery, especially if you're doing something intense like a mommy makeover, BBL lipo, anything like that. We want to have somebody there for us, right? Let's say you don't have anybody to go with you to your surgery and take care of you. Okay, so we're booking a recovery house. All right. You guys expect them to be like the surgery centers and you expect way too much. And this is where you either get great reviews on a recovery house or terrible reviews on a recovery house. And it's always that you guys are so upset, like so, so upset because they don't do the things that they say they're going to do. Now, let's first of all talk about why you want a recovery house. So you want someone to take care of you to make sure you have food transport to and from the airport as well as surgery and follow-ups and things like that someone to make sure that you know you're not falling over when you have to get up to pee in the middle of the night a place that's going to be comfortable for you that's not just a hotel where you don't have to fend for yourself you just want support right so that's what you should be expecting you should not be expecting and now i know a lot of places do have like nurses um, that are there which is great that can make sure your incisions are clean help you with your drain you know do all those things um, some places do offer post-op massage but a lot of it is incisional drainage or squeeze massage or like the really rough rubbing and all that stuff it's not really always true manual lymphatic drainage a lot of times it's the other Miami post-op massage stuff which is not what you need um, if you're confused about what you need massages post-op I would suggest watching my video that I put out a week or two ago on what massages you should be getting after surgery um, because there are a lot of misconceptions out there with this post-op massage thing even lymphatic drainage or drainage massage or incisional drainage or squeeze massage the only thing you should be getting done massage wise post-op is hands-on gentle true manual lymphatic drainage which looks like this this is it it's a super gentle light pumping motion done to the skin. It's extremely, extremely light and gentle. And we're not pushing anything on the body. We're not doing pressure. We're not using oils, lotions, mediums, wooden rollers, suction cups, cavitation, any of that, cutting open incisions, blood coming out of you, fluid spurting out of you. No, 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 none, none of that, no. So a little bit of a rant, but you you know book these recovery houses and they tell you okay you're gonna have a nurse okay we're gonna feed you okay we have somebody that comes in and does your massages okay you're gonna stay this long okay that's great wonderful so you think you found the right place then you go and the food is chocked full of salt which will make you swell and leak a million times harder um or the massages that they promise you are extremely painful and girls are screaming at the top of their lungs and crying or you have to take major painkillers before your massage which again red flag is not real post-op massage it's not what it should be shouldn't be like that you shouldn't be in pain you shouldn't be crying you shouldn't have to take painkillers um they don't wash your faha properly i've heard of places not even giving you your meds or picking them up or giving you too many of your meds like they change shift whoever's there and they od you on your meds i had a client who came to me and had to go to the hospital because she fainted because they od'd her on her meds while she was out there um there was a lot of problems with that when she came home but i have firsthand experience with that um having a client that had that um like i said they don't pick up your meds they don't speak english i've heard a lot of that where the people there don't speak english at all um they're giving you gatorade which is chock full of salt or coffee which will dehydrate you and all kinds of bad stuff things that you really shouldn't be having after surgery um chips with lots of salt in them things like that saying that they're feeding the fat guys these places are not medical professionals now the reason i'm doing this video is because i've been getting so many of you asking me what are good recovery houses in miami well i can't really say because i don't have any connections out there i am building a network um hopefully soon i will have some actual names for you guys as far as like where's good and stuff like that and if you know of any good places please please feel free to drop a comment in this video so that i can make contact with them and start sending people there um that would be awesome because it would help me and it would help you guys and it would help them but I don't have anybody as of yet. I have a few places that I could recommend, but here's what I'm gonna say. When you are looking for a recovery house, major red flags to run and not go with them. Number one, they have a WhatsApp, but not an actual phone number. 
Number two, they only have an Instagram, they don't have a website. Number three, um, they want you to DM only and not phone call. Uh, number four, if they refuse to tell you their certifications. So I posted a post that this past week um, about a place that I was contacting that I heard somebody told me about that they wanted me to check and see if they were good or not. So I asked them for their credentials, for their licensing, because they said they were taking out stitches. And I was like, okay, who's taking out the stitches? And they were like, oh, it's under doctor supervision. And I was like, okay, but who is actually taking out the incisions? Are they a massage therapist or are they a nurse or are they a doctor? And they're like, oh, the doctors are too busy for such a minimal procedure. And I was like, okay, so who's taking out the stitches? Like, what is their licensing? And they stopped answering me after the last thing that they said, which is, we can't give out that information. Guys, all of my credentials are on my website as far as what I'm allowed to do and what we're not allowed to do. Massage therapists are not allowed to be touching incisions. If you have a squeeze massage person out in Miami cutting you open, if that person is not a nurse or a doctor, run for the hills. If they refuse to tell you their licensing and credentials, which you are allowed to know, run for the hills. Um, so there's that. Uh, if, <laughs> and this, this is a, this is a funny one. <laughs> and somebody brought this up to me. So I posted a reel about the woman at that recovery house in Miami saying that she's sending her patients to the hospital and in six years she's never had to do that. But if she's sending her patients to the hospital, it's because she's trying to get away from their crabby patty ass because she knows the hospital's gonna keep you. So she's gonna say, your blood, blood pressure is low. Oh, we have to go to the hospital just to get away from you. Guys, if you catch a vibe, because this, this is what the person sent to me. They were like, hey, I called this place. They already took my money. They already took my deposit, um, but I caught a vibe and now they're not responding and not answering. What do I do? So this is my big point about this. Recovery house is not a medical facility. It is a recovery house. There's this thing that's been going on in Miami where recovery houses will pop up for eight to nine months. There will be no website. It will be DM only. It'll be a WhatsApp phone number. And then all of a sudden, eight months later, poof, they disappear. They never existed, gone like out of nowhere. Why? Because they're doing things they shouldn't be, because they're not licensed to be there, because they're not certified. I actually had somebody comment and telling me that there are some recovery houses that are just like a house somewhere that aren't actual like coded and zoned properly to be a business, um, which means they probably don't have a business license for the town. Now guys, again, caveat, this is not every recovery house that I'm talking about. These are just the horror stories that I've heard being in my line of work and I continue to hear them every day. This is constantly ongoing. So I want you guys to dot your, t dot your I's and cross your T's when you're looking for these places. When you are looking for a recovery house, do not fall into the trap of being desperate to find some place. You are better off renting an Airbnb and having someone come with you if you cannot find some place you're comfortable with. Now, I also know about these renting a nurse thing, like this nurse shoney person who's stealing people's money and not showing up, and you guys are just blindly giving money out there to people to take care of you post-op and not checking their credentials, and then they don't show up and you never get your money back. Um, I know a couple of my fellow therapists that do post-op have posted about this woman. Um, and there are other nurses that do that too. Now, there are nurses, and I've seen them, there are nurses who do post-op care who are wonderful and they'll come, you know, to your house a couple days um, or they'll come to the recovery house a couple days after surgery and check your incisions, make sure your wounds are closing, drains, care, all that stuff. Okay. They're awesome and that's what you want. What you don't want is throwing your money to someone who only has a WhatsApp or a DM and then never shows up or a recovery house that disappears out of nowhere, poof, right before your surgery and you've already put down a two grand deposit. So. When you're verifying your recovery houses, number one, make sure they have an actual website and phone number. Make sure they're a reputable business. Number two, speak to someone there and actually talk to them before you go putting a deposit down. If they only want a Venmo, a Zelle, something like that, only that kind of deposit, they're gone with the wind, you got no protection. So make sure you're actually talking to these people and making sure they're real places and not just late night DMing places, trying to get in somewhere. So there's that. Um, once you talk to someone, I highly suggest asking about the massages. And this is a problem in Miami, as we very well know. If they are doing incisional drainage, and it is not a nurse or a licensed practitioner draining seromas or dealing with drains or any of that stuff, that is a no. 
if it is a massage therapist doing really, really like, if they're telling you you need to take antibi um, antibiotics, narcotics, or painkillers or something, you know, before the massage, you might want to steer a little clear of that and get your massages outsourced from your recovery house, not in the recovery house, but somewhere else. Um, if it sounds painful, no. Um, if they're doing squeeze massage, incisional drainage, and if they say, yeah, we're not going to cut you open, but we're still going to squeeze fluid out of you. Mm. Guys, when you guys have incisions that are open, because I deal with people 48 hours post-op, when you have an incision that's open, it's covered by a gauze or a Band-Aid. We're not taking that off. That's going to stay there. And while I'm doing this extremely gentle, extremely slow, lymphatic massage, pumping motion to your body, I am going to make sure that we're not going near your incisions. We're not touching your incisions. We're not pushing fluid towards your incisions. We're not pushing fluid out of your incisions. We're not going near your drains. We're not going near your incisions. Unless you are healed and sealed and we're working over that area like a tummy tuck a month and a half out where I can work around and, and maybe over the scar, that's completely different than working over an incision. And if you do have incisions, you are fully clothed. When you guys come into my office, I tell you, Take off your garment, take everything off, put your clothes back on. Put your shorts or your tank top or your dress or whatever it is back on. You guys stay fully covered. Nothing is getting anything like that. You're wearing a bra, you're wearing underwear, you're wearing a tank top, you're wearing something. You're not just out here in the world with no clothes on and I'm squeezing fluid out of you. That's not how that works. That is not okay. So make sure that you're checking on your massage situation. And I... Do you have places to recommend in Miami um, for massage, but we have to do a virtual first so I know where you are and we're going to look up places that are close to you and I'm going to call them and vet them first to make sure that they're what we need as far as post-op and then we go from there and you schedule it and figure it out because it's going to go by availability, it's going to go by distance, things like that. So it's not as easy for me to just say, oh, okay, here are five places I know in Miami that do Vodder style hands-on manual lymphatic drainage post-op massage where they're not squeezing you or doing any of the things they're not supposed to be doing that's going to give you fibrosis. I can't just give you that because I don't know your situation. I don't know where you are. I don't know where you're going to be. I don't know how many massages you need. I can't just refer like that without knowing the situation. So if you need some place in Miami to get your massages and you already have a very good recovery house, um, set up a virtual with me. Call the office, 732-841-0142. No matter where you are, even if you're not in Miami and need a referral for a massage therapist, it's going to depend on what you have going on that we're going to help find you someone and get you set up on a plan with them. Because they're just going to, they're not going to be a post-op certified specialist knowing what to do with you. They're just going to be doing your massages. So we're going to have to figure out how many you need based on what you have going on, how frequently, all that stuff. So no matter what state you're in, regardless of what it is, you're going to have to set up a virtual before I can go ahead and recommend anyone because I don't know what's going on. So anyway, if you're in Miami, you're at a recovery house, you need a person, set up a virtual with me. If you are going to be staying at a recovery house and you want to make sure that all of your I's are dotted and your T's are crossed, set up a virtual and we'll look into it and we'll talk about it and make sure you're okay. I had someone on a virtual with me. Um, she did it two weeks before she started calling recovery houses. She picked a place before she met me, put down a deposit. We checked it. It was okay. I let her know about the things that she needs to be looking out for and how to take care of herself out there and what to tell the recovery house that she needs while she's out there and uh she messaged me <laughs> at her second virtual and told me that her recovery house doesn't exist anymore so start the search all over again um but it happens and this is why we do the virtuals is because just you know giving you a list isn't gonna really do anything um so again with the recovery houses make sure you guys know what you're doing now i know some recovery houses that have like the bbl mattress the bbl pillow all those things or um the bbl chair all those things <laughs> And actually, they've, they've told, like, the people after they've tested them, they're like, yeah, it doesn't work. Or, yeah, it's uncomfortable. Like, they're very honest about it. Then there are some recovery houses that aren't honest about it. They're, you know, not, guys, they're not certified people. They're not even, like, certified post-op people. They're not doctors. They're not medical facilities. They're not... They're not in the post-op world the way that I am as a specialist looking at your body, your anatomy, your physiology, the science behind all of this stuff, the medical knowledge behind your healing and all of this stuff and what to use and what to do. They're just people that are in the post-op world offering this stuff, but they're not going to be me in a recovery house. They're not going to know every single thing. They're not going to be able to look at you and, you know, anticipate what you need. You have to tell them. You have to know what you need going into this. So 
I suggest if you don't know what you need and you're looking into recovery houses and you're like, I'm not sure that this is the one. I don't know if I really like this. I put down a deposit. They seem okay, but I just want to make sure I have everything squared away. Set up a virtual with me and we'll get you squared away with all of that. But you got to stop acting like these places are going to be the end all and be all. They're going to be great for what they are. They're going to help you while you're out there. Then when you come home, you're still going to have to find another therapist to take care of you when you're home. You're still going to have to get a protocol for post-op for taking care of yourself. So even if you find me after you've already stayed in a recovery house, we can still continue everything and set up a virtual and make sure everything's going the way it should. Um, and again, I know a lot of people that are very unhappy with their recovery houses because you guys expect so much because they're a recovery house. But that doesn't mean that they're so on top of it with the medical knowledge. That doesn't mean that they're so on top of it with everything that you have going on specifically for your surgery. So just be very careful. Again, talk to them, verify them, make sure they don't seem too sketch. Don't just settle for a DM. Do not just settle for an Instagram message. Do not just settle for a WhatsApp number. Guys, they are in Miami, the United States. They should have a phone number, <laughs> not just a WhatsApp. Um, they may have their reasons for having WhatsApp and that's fine, but talk to them, actually talk to them. Like talk about your concerns, address your concerns. And these places are not cheap guys. It's like a grand a night sometimes, depending on where you're staying. But you want to make sure they're washing your faha properly. You want to make sure that they're getting your meds. You want to make sure that they're not just going to, horror story like I've heard, another one, pick you up in the morning at your recovery house, drop you off at your surgery center, and have you wait there at like 6 in the morning until the place opens. And there's nowhere for you to sit, and you're sitting on the side of the curb, and you just had a BBL, and they just leave you there. Yes, that is a true story. Um, so you wanna make sure that these are like actual caring and compassionate people, not like the lady that I posted about talking about how you're Krabby Patty after surgery and she's sick of you so she sends you to the hospital. Um, I was lucky enough to find that video on YouTube. It, it's a very public video. Um, but these are things that I hear all the time. So it's about the level of care, the quality. And I mean, if you do enough research, you'll find enough bad videos about recovery houses. Um, there was a girl once who the recovery house, like there was a leak in the ceiling and they never fixed it. And like the whole ceiling was falling apart in her room. And they said they had a pool and in the backyard, it, there was nothing there, like all these kinds of scams. And again, they disappear and they reappear. Um, the one that I do know that I have most clients stay at is Bellissima Recovery House in Miami. Um, I've heard that they're wonderful. I have a couple other ones that I've heard that they're pretty wonderful too, but I haven't verified. So just hearing things, again, I hear a lot. Um, so if you want me to look into your recovery house and verify it and check it, but also teach you what you need to be doing in the recovery house as far as what you need to be using when, how you need to be using it, um, supply-wise, like, you know, all of that stuff, what you should be eating, what you shouldn't be eating, um, all, all of the like extra things that you're still gonna need to do when you come home, even when you're out there. So that's why we do the virtuals and we set up a recovery plan so that when you're in the recovery house, you can tell them, hey, I need this, I need that. So guys, that's it for today. Thank you very much. I hope to see you all again very soon. Bye.